Hey guys, uh, this is Fred. Uh, this is episode 50, uh, no, 60 of my videos, and I'm here with uh, Lawrence Lepard, um, and uh, old time Wall Street guy, old time gold guy now, big time big Bitcoin guy. Uh, and uh, we're just going to be taking some questions that Larry had about uh, power laws, and I'm going to try to answer some of his questions and um, yeah, and you guys might have interest. some let's, you might find this interesting so let's call this power laws for dummies <laughs> our laws for dummies I love it I'm the yeah. dummy you're the you're the math PhD so yeah I read your stuff and I you know anytime I see a 97 percent correlation I'm like holy shit that's uh, that's pretty strong right and um, so you know it, causation correlation we can get into all of that for a minute but let's set that aside let's assume that this law has held it with this 97% correlation and that, that that's likely, therefore, to continue, um, that there is, you know, correlation and causation. Um, I was just, my immediate thing that popped to mind, I was like, okay, you know, when 200, when 500, when 1 million. Okay, so million. let's just, I want to first of all set the, it's more than, if I saw a 97% correlation on stuff, I may be interested or I may not, right? Okay. But when I see it on a time series with eight orders of magnitude or seven orders of magnitude right. of data, you know, where data comes, goes from 10 cents to a hundred thousand, right? So 1 million X, right? Right. You know, and the pizza thing is even sort of, it was at 0 .0, 0.4 cents. Okay. Right. That was right. the Bitcoin right. pizza. So, you know, we have, we, we have this data, Bitcoin prices went up a million X. Okay. Right. Uh, and, um, you know, they went up a million X in 15 years. Right. Now, first of all, there's nothing that I can see find a, a recorded price history of anything that's gone up a million X. Right. Yeah, I, I would agree. It'd be hard to find something like that. For example, I, start, I went back to Microsoft, right? Microsoft IPO'd and went up 3,500 X. Right. Since the IPO in 86. Right. Apple, a little less, 3,000x. NVIDIA, about 3,000x, okay? The Japanese stock market, from 1950 to 1990, 400x. Huh, interesting. You know, so, so we're dealing with, like, kind of uh, things that are in 10 to the power of 3, right? You know, 1,000 kind of. Now, all of a sudden, we go to 10 to the power of 6, a million, right? So if you see something like that, that has six orders of magnitude or seven orders of magnitude, and you plot it on a log log graph, and you get an R squared of 97. You you should take note. This is not right. this is not random. Right. You know. Yeah. No. It's, a, it's an unusual beast. Yeah. Um, would it if you took away some? I mean, in one case you started before the pizzas, and the other case you started at the pizzas. They they came out they came out roughly the same or similar. If, sorry? Um, on the pricing, if, what, what price you start at depends. I mean, because when you start at zero, you know, you can kind of... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. In fact, so it's really interesting that, first of all, you don't notice this pattern. Like, if you're looking at Bitcoin and you're just looking at trading view, for example, like, you know, like right. we do, right? Right, right. So what's your sort of mental model of Bitcoin? It's sort of like, well, there was this period a long, long time ago where I don't quite remember it, where it was really cheap. Yeah. Then there was the 2017 bubble, went up 20x, and then it crashed. Yeah. And then there was the 2020 and 2021 double peak, and then it crashed. And now we're kind of coming back. So that's your sort of mental model of it, right? Right, right, right. You don't see any kind of pattern there, you know? Right. Now, you have to look at it in double log form to see this pattern. You have to look at it logarithm of price, as a lot of people look at the logarithm of price, but you also have to look at the logarithm of time since the genesis, right? Okay. This is the log log model. Okay. And nobody looked at log log ever, right? And so what you get is kind of these rainbowy, these curvy type things, right? In in log right. space. And you know, you're looking at a curve and you're like, well, okay, maybe somebody drew a curve there and they plotted this curve this way. But when you look in log log space, it's very clear. Yeah. It, it's like you got this line, 
Yeah. There's, there's, and you don't you don't have to fit the line. You know, the compute, the, you know, Excel will fit the line for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, at ninety seven percent, right? And ninety seven percent. Now, you can also fit the line in twenty fourteen, which is what Giovanni did, who was the first guy to notice this, right? Okay. And he fit the line in twenty fourteen. He was like, "My God, it's a line." <laughs> yeah. So that was ten years ago. Right. So he didn't start from the zero. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Well, he started from you know one year out. But my point is, you, he saw this in 2014. He saw it again. He wrote about it in 2018. And people were like, okay, whatever, your model is some, some model. I'm not interested. Then we had this sort of stock to flow stuff that's kind of like got into the public consciousness, you know? I remember that, yeah. Right. And, and, then, and then that sort of didn't work. And then everybody was like, well, that was bad. That's a bad model. It's a model, yeah. And, uh, and so I think, you know, I sort of ran into a bunch of these models uh, through, a, I have a friend who's this astrophysicist, um, Harvard astrophysicist, uh, PhD, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and got, he worked at Sun Microsystems on high, you know, super high performance computer on Cray and these kind of things. Sun bought Cray, I don't know if you remember that. But, yeah, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, so, He's a super smart guy, and you know he kind of turned me on. He's like, "Tell the power law, man, Fred." <laughs> it's like, and I'm like, "Oh, okay." And then, then later, I met this guy Giovanni because I was quoting my friend Stephen. He's Giovanni's like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm the first guy to recognize this thing. This is my, my thing. It doesn't matter who who was the first person to discover it. It's yeah, just like right. you look at the data. It's a power law. I've done the data myself. It's a power law. You know, I don't need Giovanni or anybody else's stuff. I've I've done it myself and I recommend everybody else do their own research. But I'm telling you it was it's clearly a power law based on all the data up to 2014, 2017, 2019, 2020, all the way up to now. And the parameters haven't changed. Right. So, it's, so a couple of yeah. interesting questions for me, you know, again, power law for dummies, right? I'm not a mathematician, but fall out of it. Let's, you know, let's not get into um, you know, correlation, causation, you know, et cetera. I mean, skipping whether it's going to predict accurately going forward in the future, if it is a power law and it is going to predict accurately, what does it say about the timing on, you know, 100,000, 200,000, half a million, a million, two million? I mean, what's... Well, what's this is the best... Let me try to give you some forward. intuition as to what yeah. it's saying, right? Right. So, first of all, it's saying that the trend line, there is a sort of a trend line here that right. started at the genesis and there's a trend line. And by the way, we're roughly in the middle of that trend line. We're not, we're not cheap, we're not rich, you know, we're just sort yeah, of in the middle varies, of that trend line. It varies line. a bit around the trend, right? It varies around the trend. Now, the trend right now is it's growing in the 45% kind of range right now. Annually, right? Annually, right? So it's right. it's like an exponential growth curve, just like all growth curves that we are familiar with are exponential, right? Yeah. Population growth, whatever, anything that's exponential, right? Yeah. GDP growth, et cetera, right? Mm -hmm. Except the Bitcoin price has this really high growth rate. Right now it's about 45%. Now, back in 2017, it was 100% growth rate, right? right? It so it's time. slowing down. The right. whole thing is slowing down, right? So it's growing at 45%. Now, it's growing in logarithmic terms, right? So what does that mean? That means that one standard deviation, it means it either doubles or it goes down by half. Wow. That's one standard deviation. Yeah, right. Okay. So it's, you know, if you're looking at it in non-log space, it looks like, wow, okay, so Fred, well, give me the one standard deviation. My one standard deviation is... 30,000 on the low mm -hmm. to, um, you know, 120,000 on the high, okay? okay right. However, that's relative to where it is right now, and it's actually right. going up to 100,000. So now the one standard deviation is 50,000 to uh, 200,000. I see. And what the timing against the chart against time. Sorry, 50,000 to 150,000 to a. Uh, two hundred thousand. Yeah. Two hundred. That, that's yeah. at what date? That's at today. A year from now. A year from now. Okay. Yeah. So if you look at one year forward, right, where it's say, let's call it seventy thousand, right? Yeah. 
Right. So one year forward, the trend line goes to 100,000, right? Right. And then the uh, standard deviation is 50,000 on the downside right. to 200,000 on the upside. Now, now, this thing is really crazy, and it, it has gone two standard deviations twice. One in 2017 and one in 2014. Oh, that's fascinating. Okay. Okay. On the upside. So it I tends to err on the upside up to t even a little bit more than two. Okay. So that would imply that in one year, it could theoretically be 400. 400,000. Yeah. Or 450. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it but could get that kind probably, of. Probably unlikely to stay there. I mean, based on the model. Exactly. Designed it. At that point in time, it will be overstretched compared to the, the longer term. It, it, it does, it, it, it operates like a coil, right? So right. if it got up to 400,000, probably a good time to kind of lighten up a little bit. Yeah. yeah with an, so if you don't mind, do you, do you have a chart or do you have anything that shows kind of what that, you know, what this band looks like, you know, 2026, 2027, 2028? Yeah. Um, sure. Can we look at that? Does that be yeah, handy? let's. I'm um, curious. I'm Hold on you one know, second. I think, uh, I mean, the reason I'm digging in on this is just, you know, purely selfish reasons. Of course. I, think, I think there are a lot of us in the community that are kind of like, you know, when this is a million dollar asset, that will really be something. And I'm trying to get a sense of, you know, the boundaries of time around which that might likely occur. You know what I mean? Uh, well, I can tell you right now, million dollars, yep. it, it'll be within a decade. Okay, definitely within a decade. That's yeah. I mean, I'll I'll show you in a second. And, and, the, uh, but 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 it, since it sometimes does a two x standard deviation or a little more, we could I'd get like to know, we, we still we still won't get it. We still are unlikely to get it in the next two three years. I I would say. I get it. Yeah, because because the mean will have to be in kind of the three hundred range to have yeah. a two x standard above it get to a million. Let's take months. a look at. Uh, Let's is take that, a look does that at mean if, this if we say thing. The, if we say the mean right now is, what what did you say the mean was? Like you're saying it might be a hundred next year, and that mean is growing at forty five percent a year. Is that? Yeah, the mean is growing at forty. I'll show you. So can you see my screen I here? I did it. Okay, cool. So this thing here is a graph from this data, right? This is a live graph. Okay, a um, and. What? It's a little small. Anyway, you can punch okay, it Okay, you want to see it bigger? Uh, yeah, possible. How, is that better? Maybe I can even make it bigger uh, than I'm that. Looking at, I'm looking at... Um, like, I'm how about that? I'm seeing your Twitter stuff where... I'm seeing wait, wait, are you not seeing stuff. my... Let me see. Oh, no, no, no. Excuse uh, me. I'm sorry. I the right window open on here. I don't. Uh, uh, hold on one second. Okay. Can you see that? Uh, yes. Perfect. Great. Okay. okay. Okay, so first of all, this is live data. Would you agree that anything that looks like this over the last 15 years is pretty pretty shocking? Yeah, I mean, it's there's a strong correlation there. I, I, and that's, I get the 97%, and that's what you're talking okay, about. Okay, so, yeah. so that's that, right? So this is, kind of, this is kind of what it looks like in terms of non-linear form, non-log-log form. Do you see what I'm saying? Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so basically the green line here is this trend line, right? Yep. So we just peaked, we just went a little bit above trend line here, okay? Very helpful, yep. Okay. This upper band here is the is the uh, one standard deviation. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay, which is at 125 right now, right? Yep. This line here is the lower one standard deviation. Correct. So it could fall back into the you know, 35 or so. Yeah. So if you see here, you know, this number, this blue line is going to go, you know, well into the 200,000 within a year, right? This right. is two, a year is like that, that distance there, right? Yep. Okay. So basically, and this is kind of where you look like for the next 20 years, right? Right. And this is really what it tells you. It says, we're going to be, this is where we are, and you can see where we are now. We're just there, right? Within 10 years, we're going to be at, on this thing, over 2 million. There are probably a million. There are 500,000. 
Right. You so see what I'm saying? A 10-year out forecast. I get it. Very, very helpful. So a 10-year out forecast is worst case 500, medium case a million, best case two. Yeah, I get it. Okay. Right. Um, and it's just going to kind of keep on going. Well, let's take a – let's say we can actually look at the uh, – Let's just actually look at the the actual data. Hmm. Uh, power law model price. The, here's the. Helpful. So yeah, so here we're going from two to. Let's say let's, So in which state were you interested in? Like oh, twenty thirty five, like ten. So here we are in ten years, right? Twenty December twenty thirty four. We're between one point two and two point five. Uh, sorry, and six hundred thousand. We're sorry. We're between two point six on the upper, and six hundred thousand on the lower. Right. Got okay. It. That's ten years out. That's ten years out. Okay. Now let's look fifteen years out, which is thirty nine. Right. Thirty nine is roughly here. Right? right. Fifteen years out, we're a minimum of one point three million. And a maximum of 5.6 million, wow. and and our baseline is 2.7 million. Mean is 2.7. Yeah. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, we'll so, it back. so we've done 10, we've done 15. Let's go the other way. Can you give me five years out? Yeah, sure. So let's 2029, right? Yeah, perfect. So here we go, 2029. So the low end is 149,000. <laughs> You know, a lot of people be like, how bearish can you get, Fred? Well, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what the model tells you, you know. Yeah. You could be in five years and you're only up twice what you are from here today, right? right. That would be within the model, right? Yeah. You could be all the way up to 600,000. Okay. But not likely to be significantly above, you know, you're, you're not seeing any millions here in the upper range, right? The yeah. million looks like, 2030. The, mean's kind, of, the mean's kind of 300 on that one. The, the on the line is 300 or so. On the 2029. Yeah. It's the yeah 300. Yeah, it's about 300. Got it. Very good. You know, it, so look, I think what this is telling you is, you know, when you look at it this way, you're like, well, this model has no predictive power at all. Well, it does, but you know, you have to look at it. You have to realize that things are moving in this kind of exponential space, right? right? Yeah, if, yeah. So, you know, this thing doesn't tell you that much about what's happening next year. It could go down. It could go up. We don't know, right? Yeah. Well, there's, when you've got something that's growing at this kind of rate, it would make sense that the volatility around the rate is very extreme. I, I get it. Right. But now, if, if you ask me my opinion, yeah. I think this line is probably going to go to that line. And look, here it even went beyond one. Right. Right. And and it, this is more like actually it, actually it, this it, number it, is beyond two. I was gonna say in twenty seventeen. Oh sorry, twenty seventeen you can see it there. It's hard to see on this was chart, that, right? Yeah, it probably went two, didn't it? Or maybe even more. It did it did over two. Yeah. And let me show you uh, I'm gonna show you a different presentation on that. Um, which by the way argues that, you know, if if in five years with your mean at 300, you could, if you went over two, you could get to a million in five years. I mean, it would be very extended, but you could get there. Correct? Uh, well, the model does not say you're going to get to uh, a million in five well, years. If, well, if you're, if, yeah, but if you were at 300 as your mean in, in 2029, five years out, and you did 2x that, a little over 2x that, you'd be. You know, yeah, but here's the problem. What? These things are not independent, right? So if you start getting stretched here, you tend to revert back to the mean. I get it. No, I'm not saying, I'm not suggesting it stays there. I'm so, you know, we could have a, a movement. Oh, great. We're up to, you know, 200,000 by the end of this year. Well, yeah, that's good. But you probably actually want to lighten up a little bit there. You know what I mean? No, yeah, no, I get it in the sense that, yeah. Yeah. So th that that's that's what this model tells you. Hey, let me dog in. Yeah. Um, but I want to show you one other curve here. Um, so how do you? How this do you curve. React? Oh, go ahead. Show me what you're going to show me, and then I'll, I'll give you the. Question. Okay. So do you see this curve here? Uh, it looks. Yes. It looks. Okay. Yes. This curve is estimate. The, there really is one number in this power law that's important. It's the coefficient. It's the, the power, okay. right? 
So as you can see here, if you estimated it in, sorry? You say it's six is what you've said? It was six at one point. Now it's like more like 5.5. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yep. yep. According to, this is using a slightly different metric of time, which is block time, right? So this is Bitcoin time as opposed to, you know, chronological time. So the numbers are a little different than in this thing than in mine. It's not that the models are different, it's just the, the, the time coefficient is different. But you can see that if you measured the model initially, very right out the gate, you would have gotten to where we are now. Then it actually went down and went up. <laughs> then it went down all the way down to five. And now it's kind of, if you measured it over the last, you know, 10 years, right? Or five, seven years. It looks like it's settled it, out a little bit. Yeah. It's sort of settled. It's, it's almost like something that's oscillating and then kind of find it, found its kind of match, right? Got it. Fair enough. Um, so, so anyways, this, this is something else. And actually the volatility, is, so this standard deviation in log terms, right, was 0.315. Mm -hmm. And now over the last four years, it's dropped to 0.253. So we're also, the, the expected growth is going up, the standard deviation is going, sorry, the expected growth is going down, the standard deviation is going down as well. Yeah, I mean, based on the drawdowns, it was my understanding or my belief that it was getting more stable and less volatile. But yep. Was, you know, and, that would, and that's what you're saying, that supports. But, but yeah, this one probably would interest you. This is oh, versus yeah. gold. Oh, it does interest me, yeah. Huh. Right. Yep. <laughs> so uh, again, you know, the power law, it's not quite as good fit, but it's pretty good. Uh, actually, it's, it's 0.85, the R squared. Yeah. Okay, it's 0.87, the power law. Yeah. The exponential also fits this data pretty well for the gold. So, but, um, yeah. so shift, shift over to the criticism you're getting on this thing, which is, you know, look, we're just back testing numbers and it's, it's correlation, not causation. And how do we know this is predictive? And you know, human behavior is unpredictable, right? And and I think the biggest argument against what you're saying, what that I've heard, is okay, fine. Except you know, let's how do we how do we wrap this into the Malcolm Gladwell tipping point thesis, right? Which is to say that you know humans behave in herds, and that you know as we as, you know as things grow and as the network grows, as more people hear about it. You know, you look at the growth of a Google or anything that's network, you know, Metcalf law based. It is. Okay, so let me explain. You, you can enter a point in time when it gets steeper, I guess is what I'm trying to suggest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so I, I go back to my astrophysicist friend. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, and I'll show you how exactly you answer that, right? Okay. Which is, um, we, we have to go to, one second. Uh, so basically, what you look at in, um, is basically what we call a technological S-curve, okay? Yes, exactly, that's what I wanted to account for. Okay, so let me share, share my screen again. Uh, okay, can you see my screen? Uh, I got a blank. Yes, now I can see it. S curve. Yep. Okay. So basically, if you look at this Weibull S curve, <laughs> which yeah, follows yeah. this function here, right? Yeah. Which is sort of like this green line here. You see? Yeah. Uh -huh. You see this green line? That's like an S curve. Yeah. Okay. That's like mobile phone adoption, television adoption, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? Right. Good comparable. This is pretty comparable, okay? Yeah. Here's the model using the S-curve, okay? Um, now, the S-curve has an additional parameter, which is the sort of asymptote. Where do I trend to, you know? Right. Okay? Yeah. And so the, the, the logical way to look at that is you're going to trend to some market cap. Can you see this? Um, yes. You're going to trend to some overall market cap of Bitcoin. How big does that market cap get? Uh, could it be three trillion? Well, that would only be twice where we are now, right? Do we 
top out at 10 trillion? Do we top out at 30 trillion? Do we top out at 100 trillion? Right? Right. Hard to tell. And here, 300 trillion of fiat assets, but we're not going to get them all, right? Well, you're not going to get them all, but you might get a lot of them, right? Yeah, I agree with that. Um, and so 100 trillion does not strike me as a crazy number. Um, and interestingly enough, <laughs> my friend actually did these regressions. And actually, 100 trillion fits the data better than any of the other ones. <laughs> not by much, but, you know, yeah. it, not crazy, right? Uh, and 100 trillion, we would get there in 33 years from, uh, I believe this is from, um, from inception, right? Yeah. So 3 trillion we'd get in three years, which is about right, right? So, you know, we're at 15 years. Or we're in, in this space, we're at 16 years in terms of block time. So in a couple of years, we're going to get to 3 trillion. Then another four or five years to whatever i don't maybe it's maybe it's maybe this is a little bit different but i think in, in about under a decade we get to 10 right? right and then we in sort of another decade after that we get to 100 yeah right right so basically the way to think about this is bitcoin goes to a million maybe that takes us 10 years bitcoin gets to 10 million that takes us another 10 years right that's the way I think of it. Right. Now, the people saying this you know, is just... Hang on a second. Here, yeah, okay. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to talk a little bit about... Uh, there's, there's something you mentioned about Metcalf, right? Yeah. Okay, so let me explain. I'm going to just stop and I'll explain what, how, how this Metcalf plays into this. Price is not the only power law in Bitcoin. Okay. You can also graph number of Bitcoin addresses. Ah. Okay, right? Yeah. And that turns out to be a power law, too. Interesting. Uh -huh. Now, let's just say this is roughly t to the power 6, right? Right. Number of addresses in Bitcoin turns out to be t to the power 3. Huh. What is t to the power 3 to the squared? t to the power 6. You multiply. Uh, Which is exactly Metcalf's law. Interesting. Huh. You see what I'm saying? So basically, yeah. we're saying the number of Bitcoin addresses is growing at t to the power of three. Right. That's just sort of usage, right? Right. And as usage grows by t to the power of three, the value of the network is the square of the usage. So why wouldn't that be t to the power of nine? How do you get from three to no, six? No, it's three times two. Oh, times two. You don't. You're you right. don't take the, you yeah, don't yeah, do yeah. three. Yeah, it's not squared. Um, shows how math illiterate I am. Yeah, okay. Got but it. I'm just saying, it is Metcalf's law. You see, it's very clear, okay? Yeah. And by the way, you can also compute out the hash rate. Yeah, huh. Hash rate is also a power law. Interesting. And it's t to the power 12. So it's a square of the price. Interesting. It's a square of the price. Price is the, is the square root of the hash rate. Huh. And, and by the way, the hash rate power law is even more precise than the price power law. Is that right in terms of the R squared fit? It's, wow. Yeah. Wow. It's amazing. And, and by the way, this guy Giovanni found it out on his own. And then this guy Steven was like, yeah, price is the... The hash rate is the main thing that, that, that has the best fit. Including Kaiser and others saying the hash rate's a very good indicator of the price. And that's a, that's a super, I hadn't thought of it in those terms. And I hadn't well, thought. and part of the way that they think of it that way is what is the real value of Bitcoin? Right. It's, the, it's the hardness, right? Right. You know, it's so uh, the hardness is the hash rate. And Bitcoin is, you don't have to do anything with your Bitcoin. You can trade it once a year. You know, you right. don't. It's not like you have to try the. It's not like the velocity of money. You know, PV equals. Uh, right. You know, like PV equals MQ or whatever that right. that thing was. Right. right. It 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 doesn't need to be volatile. It just needs to preserve its value and be super hard. Right. right? So the hash rate is really important, and the hash rate's growing at t to the power twelve. Hmm. Now I also have an idea why that why that's squared. 
And I think the reason that's squared is you have two phenomena there, which is you have the halving, which is exponential to the power two, right? Uh, right. right. You double in two in two yeah. years. Every four years you get half. Every, you double in four years, right? Right. But Moore's law, if you remember, yeah. says the number of transistors on a semiconductor doubles in two years. Oh, interesting, huh? So you square in four years. Interesting, huh? So yeah. I can't least, quite pair that in, but it's yeah, roughly well, it's interesting mathematical relationships. It's it's fascinating. It's it's kind of it. Look, these these things are not random. <laughs> like the one thing I will tell you is this is just. It is completely not, I mean, I can tell you, I, I I have a PhD from Stanford. I spent four years with Tom Cover. Tom was my main guy, guided my thesis. Okay. Tom worked under Claude Shannon. Do you know who Claude Shannon I, is? I no, no, I have no idea about how this world operates. He, he is the founder of artificial intelligence. He's the guy who invented the computer bit. He is the founder of entropy theory, is the founder of information theories. He's undoubtedly the most important um, computer science mathematician of the 20th century, undoubtedly. Wow. And uh, Shannon and, and Cover. So I spent a lot of time on this stuff. And by the way, these guys were really interested in forecasting stock prices and everything else. Right. Shannon wrote like papers on like, how do you allocate investment funds under uncertainty? Sure. And so I've seen a lot of this kind of data. And then I went on Wall Street and hey, I was kind of one of the very first quants traders, okay, on Wall Street. Right. And so I did this stuff. I've looked at all these data series. I've looked at bond price models and two factor models and right, right, diffusion right. models and jump diffusion models and all kinds of stuff. I've never seen a data set in my entire life that is as compelling as the Bitcoin price data set. Oh my God. In my entire life, it, nothing. And, and, that, and in your view, based on what you've seen, your experience, your knowledge of the math, there's just no way that this randomly came out like this. In other words, it's... it's, it's you might as well just go onto the Empire State Building, put a Dixie cup underneath, and throw a quarter and try to hit it in the Dixie cup. I mean, that's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the kind of like you know randomness we're talking about. There's yeah. there's just no way. Right. I mean, and, and look, it's not my model. I, I could give you the model. I could say, Larry, go into Excel. You're gonna might have a few hard times, but you'll come back and you'll get the exact same numbers as right. me. No, it's, this is a yeah. You, you know, it doesn't matter how you do the math, whatever. You're gonna like find these. Your point is, it's almost like a mathematical proof. Yeah. It is a truth. Yeah. Now, you know, could it? Could it change? Well, it can, right? But like, I feel like there's this thing is it's very unlikely to, to deviate from this. In the same way, I think like if you look at the stock market right now, okay, yeah. what's the chance that the Dow Jones goes to I don't know three thousand in the next ten years? Zero, yeah, right? Damn low, yeah. Right. What's the chance that it, you know, goes to 300,000 in the next 10 years? Also pretty low, right? right? I mean, they're possible, but I'm just saying there's sort of a statistical yeah. bounds by which the stock market is yeah, moving, possible, right? Yeah, I get and it. so I'm just saying that this is not something you can necessarily trade on, right? It's right. not telling you, okay, I checked the model today. It's, it's low, yeah, it's high. Go by. Yeah, because, because there's movement within this boundary. One thing I'm interested in that I, I thought was fascinating, you, talk, you touched on it earlier, maybe we could just talk about it kind of going forward. You said in the past that the model was kind of growing at 100% a year, the underlying value, um, but th that has slowed down. That, yeah, you know, as, so let as, me explain as, that, because yeah, I made and, another. And tell, me, tell me where we're gonna get to. I mean, are we gonna get to the point where at some point that growth rate is 15% or even three, you know, it's, when we're on full, a full Bitcoin standard, will it be 3% a year? I mean, how, how does that number evolve over time? Do you know what I mean? That'd be, I'd be ah. curious to know. Okay, well, I can even tell you even better than that, which I'm gonna tell you is how to actually compute that number for yourself. Oh, great, <laughs> yeah, that'd be helpful. Okay, so you're gonna, uh, this is pretty, but I actually came up with that number re relatively recently. Um, yeah. And uh, I'm just gonna show you this. Uh, Okay. Fascinating stuff, mm. Fred. It really is. Yeah. yeah. So, 
Uh, I'm just going to play this quick video for you. Let me do, oh, hold on a second. Okay. Let me take this thing up like here. Um, and I'm just going to share. Hold on one second. After you do this, I'm going to ask you one last question, then I'll let you go. Okay, perfect. Uh, do this first. Okay. Okay. Tell me, it, can you see my screen? Yeah, I can. Yep. Slowing up okay. exponential growth. Yep. Yeah. So I'm just going to just sort of show you, uh, see if I can kind of go. So in, in 2014, Bitcoin price was growing at 200%. Right. How do I know that? Okay. Uh, the reason I know that is if you look at the equation, and I'll and then. So we'll explain how I know it later. So in 2014, it was 200%. In 2019, it was 79%, okay? So back in 2017, it was almost 100%, okay? It was 100%. Today, it's 47%, maybe 43%, right? How are you measuring those numbers, yeah? I'll show you. Okay. Five years from now, it's going to go to 34%. Okay. 20 years from now, it'll be at 19%. It's kind of roughly when I think we're going to get to hyper-Bitcoinization. Yeah. Okay. So at 19% means, by the way, I double in four years. So it's, right. we're kind of back to the having kind of stock-to-flow model, right, right, right. right? So this is how we do it. This is what a power law is. Y equals AX to the power B, right? Okay. Right? Huh. So now... Let's take y of t plus 1 divided by y of t. Well, the a's drop out, right? Uh -huh. You have a's. Uh, right. So okay. you put t plus 1 there and t and you divide. a's drop out, right? Okay. So you get x to the power b, where x is t plus 1, there should be a paren around those, divided by t, right? So what I can do now is... Basically, what that means is I can estimate this value here, and it changes in time, this value x to the power of b. It changes with time, right? It's t plus 1 over t. So what is it right now? It's t plus 1 is t is 15, so it's 16 fifteenths to the power 6. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's 1.47, right? That means we're going at 47%, right? You see? Where is it going to be in 10 years? Well, it'll be 21 divided by 20, right, to the power of 6. It's going to be about uh, 30%. So it's very similar to an exponential, but slowing every year. So this is, what, this is kind of how it looks. And this is how the other series also look. The addresses go from 21% to 16% to 12% to 9%. I see. You see what I'm saying? But, and you're sort of like, well, this is not that fast, but it is still pretty fast, right? If you get this kind of 20% growth, 29, 30, 30 by 1950, <coughs> every, every person on the planet will have a Bitcoin address. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So, okay. so final, it, it, final it's, very, it's very deceptive. Um, you know, it's a very deceptive thing. Intuition is not good for exponential. We humans are not, we're not good at like estimating exponential things. Right. Yeah. No, it's, it's the folding the piece of paper in half and pretty soon you're. We're folding the piece of paper and you can't ever, you'll never figure that one out. You yeah, know, it, it, it's the same way a, a stadium fills up. If you double the amount of water in it every minute, you know, at, at, at an hour, the whole thing is full. But it, it, yeah, 70, exactly. 45 minutes, you're still only 7% full or something. Yeah. Um, but we're dealing with an exponential thing, which is why you got to be holding Bitcoin. I mean, it is the, the you know, it's just a, well, we you cannot, and, and you cannot we're think about selling yeah, your Bitcoin. That. All we're trying to figure out is how to model the go forward price. Tell me again for dummies, and I'm one. Um, yeah. Give me, give me the. No, why. you're not a dummy. <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh, and this no. shit I am, Fred, Fred. I'm not a math mm -hmm. guy. But g give me a, um, give me a, uh, you know, the quick. Uh, dummies version of why stock to flow is so flawed. I know you, you think it's total bullshit and not realistic. Can you dumb it yeah. down so that just the average guy can understand why? I'm going to, I'm going to, I have the perfect reason why for you. Okay. Stock to flow. If it worked for Bitcoin, it should work for gold. 
right? And it hasn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now, right. let me ask you this. Has the stock to flow of gold changed that much in the last 20 years? No. Stock to flow of gold. Okay. Has, has the price of gold changed in the last since 2004 when the gold ETF came out? Yeah. Yeah. Right. The price of gold went up. Yeah. It went down. It went back up. Yeah. Good point. So stock to flow did not make an iota of difference for the price of gold, right? It didn't make a difference. Now, it is true that Bitcoin is, you know, we, we all love the scarcity of Bitcoin, right? But it's not true that the, that one number, which is that stock to flow, just mathematically drives the price of Bitcoin. It, it doesn't, okay? Now, what the stock to flow guy did to make the kind of data fit, right? Because if you did, if you plotted stock to flow against Bitcoin, it would not fit at all. But what he did is he How took, to fit? Yeah. well, he did <laughs> a little bit of a tricky thing. He basically took a power law of the stock to flow and he took a power of Bitcoin. Well, the problem is this, the stock to flow is monotonic in T in time. It increases with time. So the stock to flow, because it's determined by time completely, right? It, um, you could say it's very correlated with time. Stock to flow is correlated with time. Well, because of the power law, Bitcoin is correlated with time. So therefore, Bitcoin is somewhat correlated with stock to flow <laughs> as well. Right. So it's, it's, a, it's a bastardized version of what's really going on, which is all these power laws happening. It's not really, it's not a quote unquote first principles thing. Yeah. It is not the case that things go up because they're scarce. I'm sure you have things that are very scarce that are not valuable at all in your house. Correct. You, you, you know, you know, you might have a little tchotchke that is one of a kind and is worth nothing. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. so scarcity does not, is not the only thing that drives value. It's a lot of other things like adoption, Bitcoin wallets, now the ETF, right. you know, perception of Bitcoin as money, yeah. you know, El Salvador adopting Bitcoin, all these things. It's human it's, preferences, yeah. It's, it's human, human preferences. Yeah. It's not just scarcity. Yeah, I get So it. I feel like it's, I understand why everybody went wrong. When I first saw it, I was like, ooh, wow, this thing, I remember seeing it and I was like, well, this is pretty cool. Like, actually, the R squares look pretty good. And could it really be this simple? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Corey Klipstein sort of, you know, came out and said, well, this thing, for whatever reason, you know, I, he, he kind of sort of said, no, this is wrong. And I was like, well, Corey, I don't really know if you're, you're super qualified to say mathematically that it's wrong, but I did sort of sense that something, he identified something that was wrong with it, right? And, uh, you know, then in 2020, and it was, he came up with it in 2019 and the model failed in 2022. Yeah. So it lasted all of, you know, yeah, it, I'll tell you, three years. I'll tell you, I remember it very clearly because it cost a lot of people money. And I remember I was very sad. There were a lot of people, you know, uh, plan B was saying we're going to 150 on that last ramp, you know, just very quickly. And so a bunch of guys, a bunch of, you know, young traders got in there and levered the shit out of their Bitcoin, right? And, well, and here's the problem. The biggest problem. Got blown out, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, here's the problem. Everybody focused on this downside, right? Yeah. So, like, it can't go below this level. Well, that's not how these models work, right? There's no, like, hard floor right. that you will never go below, ever, right? Uh, but, you know, it's like, and by the way, in, uh, you know, in 2017, the power law always stuck to within one standard deviation. Right. It did. Yeah. So, you know, 2017, you're looking at it, you're going, uh, not 2017, 2022, I'm saying. Yeah. It was that one standard deviation down. Right. You're looking at it, you're like, there's nothing, nothing weird happened at all with this model. Right. 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 So I just think that, but I think it's not the case, like if you told, told me, does the power law guarantee you will go down no more than one standard deviation? Well, it's so far it hasn't. We've had 15 years of data and we've never gone below one standard deviation. Right. Could it happen? It might, 
but you know, generally, I think that it, you know, these, these things are not to be used for leverage trading and all the rest. Right. Right. You know, these things are these things. If the only practical use of this is, it should give you a lot of conviction that your bags are good. Yeah. Right. They, they, you, you they, know, they were strongly going in the right direction, and the prices will be significantly higher within the band that the, that the model describes. And that, I, right. That, and that band, that's, that's you know, very you, helpful, and that allows people, I think, to to you know suffer through whatever volatility there is, where you have a thirteen percent drop and then a thirteen percent pop, and it's right. Kind of like, yeah, it's just standard stuff, right? Yeah. So I, I, I look. I think it's useful. Um, yeah. You know, I think you know. I would encourage, what I really would encourage people to do is, even if it's a very simple thing, um, you know, try to make a very simple crude model in Excel yourself, yeah. you know, Excel or Google Sheets or whatever. It really, it really does help to actually do the work yourself a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, if you're putting, let's just say a number, 10% of your net worth in Bitcoin, yeah. you know, I, I, I think, you know, having a your own little model of how this thing is going is important. Yeah, I would agree. Do not trust Fred. Do not trust Giovanni. Do not trust anybody. Right. Do your own work, you know. Right. Right. Get your way. own conviction around this stuff. Yeah. Uh, don't, and don't blame me if, it, <laughs> if, it, well, it's, if it's, this it's, thing goes down to the one band and you get right. blown out. Don't say, Fred told me so, because I'm not saying that. I'm saying, I get it. this I is a model. You need to understand it. Well, I, I look and if at you don't it, want to use it, don't use it. You know, it's at, fine. I look at it much more at a social level. I mean, to me, the I've always thought the the two the only two risks that could mess this thing up are one, there's a technical failure of some kind, and I think, you know, eight hundred and some odd blocks in, eight hundred thousand blocks in, you know, in yeah. fifteen years, that that's that's now a very low probability. And then I would say the second thing would be just less usage, less adoption, less addresses, less hash. I mean, if suddenly everybody just came became bored with it and said, ah, to hell with it, it's not that big a deal then, you know, we would all be wrong. But, you know, the way I look at it is, you know, I, I look at it as a substitution asset where I say to myself, there's 300 trillion of fiat and there's 1.4 trillion of this thing. And guess what? That fiat is getting debased like you read about. <laughs> so yeah. we know what's coming, right? And it's going higher. How much higher? Hard to say, you know, with... Ex with, with well, with look, I think, I think what... I really do believe that, you know, Vijay Boyapati had this chart and his thing is, look, you have gold. That was the money of the 19th century, right. right? You got fiat. That's the money of the 20th century and the early 21st century. Yeah. You know, at some point, we are going to go to a Bitcoin as currency, as a world currency. I it's going to start so. out by... Bitcoin as an internet money for internet kind of things, and, well, and, and eventually first, it'll be you, the first you, use you, case. You, the first and most obvious use case is store of value, but I, I don't. You know, in my mind, I have very little doubt that my kids will denominate things in Sats. That they will. That, yeah. That is, it, 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 this is going to become, yeah. and that's why it's so big, right? Because right. we're talking. We're not just talking about you know the mobile phone. You know, is, no. and the mobile phone is revolutionary, right? Or the television, or social networks, or right? Plane, or even even the internet. Although the internet was pretty damn revolutionary in terms of information, but but yeah, no, you're talking about the base layer of the entire economy, and it's yeah, it's, that's it. This is the base layer. That's exactly right. This is the base layer of the entire, the whole kit and caboodle for the entire planet. Yeah, and I mean, it's I mean, I the the case the thing I used in Madeira was. You know, MS DOS, which grew into you know a more complicated system, was the base layer of PCs, yep. and you know it became a multi-billion-dollar company. And uh, you know, and Ballmer could see it in the early days, and he was pounding the table, telling me to buy the stock. And uh, we're you know, still early, though. We're very, very. Oh, we're in very. that first. We're in the first one percent. So, look, we've got this tremendous opportunity, and you know, all, all, you know, I'm just here to observe, and you know. Yeah, no, it's fabulous. You know, listen, I, you know, I, I really appreciate your work and the, the you know, your mathematical yeah. skills are really, it's quite impressive and it's, it's helpful. I mean, it, look, there's no, there's no certainty about anything in life, but understanding some of this stuff, um, you know. As I say, look, if you don't, you can choose not to use these models. Sure. But it's sort of like driving blind with a blindfold, you know, yeah. like, you know, it's like you better, you might want to like look at these models and. 
that's the language in which you should be operating in. Correct. Yeah. You know, it's sort of like it's sort of like you fly a plane. You better know a little bit about aeronautics. Right. You know. Yeah. You're a pilot. I'm a pilot. You know, it's like yeah. you you better understand. You know. The, yeah. the force on the wing. You know? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> a how little bit. You know. How lift actually gets generated. Yeah. No, exactly. It's, 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 uh, it's you you need a little bit. You don't need to be a physicist to fly a plane, but you need a no, little bit of understanding understand of the basics of it. And it, it gives me great comfort that we're in the right place. And that this. Yeah. I think we are. We're in a great spot, and I think we're going to have a great. I think we're going to have a great couple of years right now, oh, and yeah. you know, obviously, there's going to be, there's going to be really hard periods, and you know, I'm sure that. We'll probably talk to each other three years from now, and we'll both be like, you know, sobbing that Bitcoin is only at three hundred thousand down from a million or whatever, you know. <laughs> we're down from. But like that, years. that's kind of the asset that we're we're in, yeah, you that's, know. That's the game. I mean, I you know, I bought, I bought a ton in twenty seventeen at sixteen and seventeen thousand. Yeah. You know, only to watch. Looks it great now, there. right? <laughs> yeah, feel now, but you know, no. I tell you the buy the you know the real the, a couple of guys on Twitter contacted me and, and bragged about how they did it. The guys who really got this right, Fred, were the guys who bought the FTX bust. I mean, imagine, you know, really unloading, packing up your bags at 15k, because you had so. I mean, that, they paid the same thing. I paid 15k in 2017, so here they were, you know, six seven years later, and um, you know they basically bought the same thing. And uh, same price. look, I think the whole thing is about this stuff is having conviction. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. why do why am I on Twitter? It's really it's kind of like for to, to further my own conviction. Well, right? why do I want to talk to guys like you? Because like the more I can hear it from other people, the more I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not nuts. Yeah. And, and in the I'm not days, I'm not completely insane yeah. and I gotta because say, my accountant like, thinks I'm completely and utterly insane. Oh, I, a lot of people think I am. And I, and I remember in 2017, 2018, it really was kind of insane. I mean, I would tell people about this, and like, you're out of your mind. I and mean, this is magic internet money. It's a joke. Yeah. You know, but that's, you know, obviously we're beyond that point now. So thanks so much. But anyways, Larry, I really, really I appreciate it. I think, Likewise. I think everybody's going to enjoy this kind of banter. I would because agree. It's, I mean, I, like you I know. say, I, you know, your, your stuff is pretty high level, and so I appreciate you kind of dumbing it down. And my guess is that this, this video will be well received because it helps the average guy to understand what you're doing. And that's helpful. Great. Well, thanks, yeah, Larry. Thanks, and I'll po post the video up and I'll, I'll give you a copy of it, okay. too, if you want to you post yeah, it or do whatever do it. you want. Please do, and I'll retweet it when, uh, when you get okay, it. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, See, ya. Okay, See ya. Bye. Bye.